Yo guys, what is up and welcome back to another episode. Today I got a little treat for y'all. I've been asking you guys, what videos do you guys want to see? What how to, what foul Friday videos are you guys interested in me doing most? And one of the main questions that I get honestly on a daily basis is, Bobby, why don't you shoot your retay anymore? It's not that I don't shoot it and it's not that I don't like the gun, but there are some reasons why you guys don't see it on the videos very much. And today I'm gonna give you those few reasons why. But not only that, today we're gonna do a little comparison over the Rite and the Franke. And yet again, I'm gonna give you my two cents on both guns, what I do and don't like about both guns. And so I just wanna wrap up the long old question. Bobby, why don't you use your Rite anymore? And is the Rite good? Because I get both of those questions quite a bit. There's a bunch of you that are interested in buying the Rite and it's not a bad gun but we will get to that here in one minute. But before we get going here, I have to give a massive, massive shout out to Ducks Waterfowl. Without them, I could not be doing these videos and actually this video today is sponsored by Ducks Waterfowl Co. If you guys haven't checked out their new hat, you need to check it out. I will link that bad boy and this hoodie down in the description below. Go check them out and go pick you something up. Every time you guys pick something up from DucksWaterfowl.com, it goes directly to supporting your boy and bringing you more videos. So now on to the shotguns. We are gonna compare these bad boy a little bit first. The features, the lengths, how they feel, yada, yada, yada. And then we're gonna actually take them apart. We're gonna look inside of them and I have something, a few things actually to show you on the internals and some, some things that I do like and some things that I just don't like. And it also adds to the reason why I can't use that retay. So comparing them both, I'm telling you what, they are extremely comparable in size, shape, and everything. Now you will see that I have my tube on my Franke. Uh, the retay, I don't have a tube for, and that's actually something that I was just referring to. The retay, you actually can't put a tube on it. To my knowledge, you cannot put a tube on the retay. And a lot of you guys know I have to have a tube on my gun come snow goose season and especially pigeon hunting. Pigeon hunting, yes, a lot of you don't pigeon hunt, some of you have, but on pigeon hunting there's no rules, no limits, no plugs. Nonetheless, I like having my tube on for pigeon. And we're pretty much done with snow geese like I said in the last video, but I'm leaving this bad boy on because if I use this thing, it's gonna be for some pigeons up until turkey season comes. So I hope you can uh, see me alright, I'll probably have to duck down like this quite a bit, but here is the Rite, and I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to show you guys one of the reasons why you can't put a tube on this, and um, to my knowledge, you can't get around this issue. Oh man, I put that on tight, wow. So I'm going to show you guys why, um, to my knowledge, there's no way to get around this. Um, I haven't actually talked to Rite about this, but right there you go. Um, see that there? See how the end of that tube is? So this is the uh, stock tube. And at the end you can tell that there's a long bolt style deal. I, I don't, don't quote me on what it's called exactly, but when this uh, slides over the top like this, there we go. Wow, Bob. So. There we go, we got her back together. And as you can see, where a tube would actually screw on, that nub sticks out. That's where you can actually take out your plug. So, one really awesome thing about this, yeah, you can't put a tube on it because of this feature, but you can take your plug in and out very, very, very easily. That is one very nice thing about this. A lot of you guys know, just like on my Franke, uh, on a lot of other guns, you actually, you actually have to take a, uh, a little stopper out of the top with some like needle nose pliers. It's kind of hard. And then you can take your plug out. The Rite, was one thing that's very nice is you can do just that. Take your cap off, take your end cap off, slide your plug right out. It makes it really, really nice. But you cannot run a tube on it because of the end bolt. Now. The barrel slides off like normal, take your end cap off, barrel, and then you can remove the bolt. It just literally slides right out. And then one really, really cool feature about the Rite 
is that you press this little button under here and the entire trigger system just falls out of the bottom. There's no pin holding it like normal guns. So the Rite really does have some awesome, awesome, awesome features here. Time for the old Frankie. Let's take her apart, take the tube out. Now, one thing about my, uh, if you guys have tubes on, you know, you got to be careful just like that because your springs are a mile long when you have tubes on. Now, guys, I get a lot of comments from you guys stating, Bobby, I don't know what's wrong with my gun. What gun do I need to buy? My gun keeps jamming on me. Is Franke really the best gun to buy? Look, guys, Franke probably is not the best gun to buy. I don't know. I'm not sponsored by him or anything like that. But I know that it's the best gun that I have ever owned. Now, that sucker is completely torn apart. I think I've torn that thing apart literally hundreds of times, so it's really easy for me. Back to what I was saying, you guys are always like, man, what gun should I buy? I like that retail, I like the way it looks, I like the Franke. You, it looks like you've had great luck over the years with your Franke. Look, this is, the why, this is the one reason why I love my Franke. It's the first best gun, if that makes any sense, that I've ever bought. So, it's the best gun that I have ever purchased. Now, I have not bought a lot of expensive semi-automatic guns in my day. This is my like fourth season on this gun. So, it's held up very good, especially for the price point of a Franke Affinity. I think I spent right under $800 for my Franke Affinity. The Rite costs about the same price. Now, here's the Rite all torn apart. Here's the bolt, one piece system there. Don't have to even take the handle out to get it out of the gun. And like I said, the trigger system, as you can tell right there, see that ground down safety trigger? Yeah, that's your boy Bob doing his handyman work, trying to uh, grind it down a little bit so my finger didn't rub on it so bad. Hold up. Look at him. Oh, I'm going to miss him so much. The last of the Canadas are rolling in. We're, we're holding a ton of ducks, let me tell you. But back to what I was saying, the Rite, I love it. Very easy gun to tear apart, as you've seen. The Franke has a few more parts. Now you got to take the pin out to take the trigger system out. You got to take your ejection handle out to uh, take the bolt out. And then there's one, two pieces to the bolt, whereas it's a one piece bolt with the Rite. So some of the features, the build of that Rite, it is built very good. It's almost I, I like how it's put together a little better than the Franke, to be quite honest. But the one thing that still gets me is not being able to put a tube on this bad boy. Sitting here looking at the end of uh, the Rite, and it does look like you can take the end off of uh, the stock tube here. Uh, maybe you can. Maybe you can take this off and they have a different fit for it. That will allow an extension tube, but I haven't seen one yet. So if any of you guys know the answer to that question, let me know down below. Am I wrong? Can you put a, a uh, tube on the Rite? Because not, not that I know of. But I did want to show you the teardown of these guns. Uh, they're very, very comparable, to be quite honest. And also, both of them are a hair dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these bad boys, throw them back together, and then, and then I'm going to give you my, my real two cents on what my personal preference is on this Franke over the Rite. Because I do have some comments, and I have my tips and two cents about it. i got to tell you. I got the Rite all cleaned, got the Franke all cleaned, and I'm going to put the tube back on the Franke here. Wanted to, guy, wanted to give you guys a tip on uh, putting tubes back in guns here. I'm telling you, it can be tricky. You got to be real careful with these long springs so you don't get them bound up inside the tube. But here we go putting this tube on. Always, I got a little trick. I usually feed the spring down there and then I push the spring down in there, you got to compress that spring and slide your tube over the top. Oh, and then let her go. And then, as you put it on, as you screw it down, more geese flying overhead. Kind of hit it so it unbinds that spring, then screw it on some more. It twists the spring as you screw this on, so you got to kind of unbind that spring a little bit. 
Okay, there she is. Turn, put her on there tight. She's good to go. So now we got two nice clean guns. So as far as a performance comparison on these two guns, I swear it gets a little bit different. Now, I'll tell you what. The goods of the retail, let's go through that. This gun, for one, is extremely, and I mean extremely light. You're not going to find a better, uh, a more comfortable, lighter shotgun. I mean, honestly, the minute that I picked up this gun, and the minute that anybody I hand this gun, they're like, hey, is that that retail? Let me see it. So I've let a lot of people shoot this in the blind. I've let them use it on hunts, and I've let them just hold it. And it, the first thing anybody says that puts it in their hands is, wow, that thing is light, Bobby. Now, I'm not saying that the old Franke is heavy by no means, but I will say this is the lightest shotgun that I have ever shot and held in my life. And a lot of my friends, a lot of my hunting partners that have used this and shot this Rite have said the same thing. Now, the downfall to having the lightest shotgun is that this is a inertia gun just like the Franke is. Both inertia guns. The Rite, you put a heavy, heavy, heavy load in this. And man, it kicks like a mule. I'm not, I'm not lying. It shoots straighter than an arrow. I mean, it shoots straight. You're going to hit whatever you pull up on. It shoots very, very, very accurate. But with it being so light, man, it kicks really, really hard. Now, I'm not saying I'm a wussy. I'm not saying that I can't handle a little bit of, a little bit of kicking on the old shoulder. But what I am saying, when you put them, them heavy loads in there and you go busting four boxes in a morning... And tell you you're gonna feel it the day after the Franke now is a little heavier I don't have any accuracy issues with it but it's not near as light as the retail I do love like I've always said guys I love very slim nimble light shotguns I think it's very important to be able to be comfortable and have a light gun that you can swing around I think movement being able to move and and move your shotgun sideways to follow birds pull it up fast whatever you need to do it's important for shotgun accuracy but i can tell you guys if i didn't have my franke and all i had was my rite i'd be perfectly fine with that i wouldn't care i wouldn't mind but you guys know how much how much i have used this franke it's been three or four years worth now and it's never failed me and not only not only that but I am so comfortable and used to this gun. I think that's one of the key things to shotgun accuracy, guys. A lot of you are like, Bobby, I need tips on shooting accuracy. Bobby, my gun, I can't hit anything with it. I want to buy a new one. Look, guys, find you a gun that you're comfortable with and stick with that gun. So if you're not having any troubles with the gun, if it isn't failing you, if it hasn't broken, anything like that, you need to get used to one gun in particular. It's got to become part of you, you know? It's got to become all the movements about that gun when you pull it up, when you, when you pull it to the side, to the left, to the right, you need to be used to that gun. And the more you use that gun, the more you're going to get used to it. So all in all, just because you go buy the most expensive Benelli or, or whatever it is, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to shoot anything better or more birds in particular. My theory is find you a gun you like. Doesn't have to be the best. Doesn't have to be the cheapest. Doesn't have to be the most expensive, guys. But use that one gun and get used to it. I'll be quite honest with you. When my affinity just poops out on me, I'll probably buy another affinity i'm not kidding i'm not joking there i am not i'm not affiliated with franke whatsoever but i absolutely love this gun and hey if they wanted to send me one for free you know that'd be great <laughs> but what i'm saying is that i'm just used to it i can i can shoot very well with this gun given the amount of hours the amount of time that i've invested and put into shouldering that shotgun over and over and over in a lot of different different situations dove hunting pigeon hunting goose hunting duck hunting turkey hunting all the above that's my tool and, and that's my go-to tool is that franke affinity and like i said i'll probably stick with that gun forever if it goes out on me i'll probably buy another one i'm not kidding yet because i still haven't used a better shooting gun now i know a lot of my buddies are are just hooked on benelli's and that's fine if I would have bought a Benelli before the Franke and gotten used to, ben to the Benelli, I'd probably be all over the Benelli. It's all about what you're used to. 
that's what I prefer is what I'm used to. But real quick, I want to know what videos you guys want to see. I want to know if you guys like this one. I want to follow this one up with some more shotgun videos. Now, I have a lot of buddies that, that have, you know, Super Black Eagle 3s, 2s, uh, Browning Maxis, uh, all kinds of them, Berettas, A400s. I mean, tons of SX3s, SX4s. I have so many buddies that have so many different guns. If you guys want to see some videos, some more videos of gun comparisons, like the Super Black Eagle 3 compared to the Super Black Eagle 2, you guys have to let me know down below if you guys want to see those videos. Because if so, I'll go borrow my buddy's guns. We'll go take them out. We'll do some target practicing. We might uh, compare uh, shot patterns. That might be a good one. If you guys want to see those videos, let me know down below. Or even if you just want to see review videos, like on the new Super Black Eagle 3, or on the 2, or on any guns in particular, put them down below. I'll get the gun, and I will do some review videos, or whatever you guys want to see. But honestly, guys, I hope I covered the uh, long old question that you guys asked the most. Uh, Bobby, why don't you shoot your retake? And guys, again, that's just because I am way more used to my Franke affinity. I mean, I, I just cannot, I can't, whenever I pick up a different gun, I've had to shoot the retake, and then I shot uh, another buddy's gun this year. And, and they're great guns. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with them. But it's just being comfortable and used to that one gun that you've always had in your hands. And like I said earlier, big shout out to Dex Waterfowl Co. Check out the new hat. Oh yeah, she dope. If you guys want to pick it up, I'll link it down in the description below. But thank you all for being here. If you like this video, give your boy a big old thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, you ought to. And if you haven't turned on the notifications right down there, that bell, hit that bell. It'll notify you when I upload. Thank you all for being here like always. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.